Yo guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. And today I'm going to bring you guys my Smackdown Live review for March, I believe, 12th or 13th, 2018. Hope you guys will enjoy the video. Sorry for the late upload. Yesterday I just wasn't feeling like recording and I do apologize for that. Now before we, we get into the review, my Twitter is at the Burn Toast 11 My TVGWF Twitter is at TVGWF. My Twitch is the Burn Toast YT, and I will have a card in the top right corner. It has a, it will have a playlist of my five most recent videos. You can go ahead and click on that, binge watch my content, and you can also click on the video that will show my Monday Night Raw review from Tuesday afternoon. Anyway, let's get straight into it. So we start out the show with still your WWE champion AJ Styles cutting a promo, saying that he has the utmost respect for Shinsuke Nakamura in that he run smackdown live basically and the nakamura came out and saying and, and he said that he respected aj styles as well and then they both had a handshake and then all of a sudden we got right into the mat the first match of the night which was aj styles taking on rusev in a one-on-one -on -one match so the winner of this match was aj styles via pinfall and basically what happened was i mean a, via disqualification excuse me uh, what's it called? So basically, Rue 7 in English soon interrupted before champion and challenger come to blows. This was the promo. And then the Bulgarian brute controlled the bout for a good while, overwhelming the champion. Rusev's size presented, prevented Styles from using his full arsenal as he tried to clap, clamp on the calf crusher. English ended up attacking Styles. And then the one-on-one, -on -one, I mean, the, the beatdown started on AJ Styles from Rue 7 in English. All of a sudden, Shinsuke Nakamura comes down and saves his opponent at WrestleMania 34. They will be contesting for the WWE Championship in hopefully the main event. Hopefully, if not, it, it will be the co-main event. But yeah, AJ Styles wins this matchup via disqualification. The next match, ma the next matchup was the Bludgeon Brothers taking on Jimmy Uso and Big E. Basically, what happened was I did voice my opinion on Twitter about how I think WWE should have you know, book the match. I think that the match should have ended with the Jimmy Uso and Jey Uso retaining the titles. Then the Bludgeon Brothers come down and attack, but instead they attack mid-match, and we are basically derived of a very good match it was looking up to be. And, you know, these, these two tag teams, the Usos and the New Day, put on some great matches, and sadly we didn't get to see another one here, and the Bludgeon Brothers do attack them, and this actually does... This might set up a WrestleMania moment for Harper and Rowan, was, which honestly I would not be opposed to seeing due to the fact that Harper is very underutilized and so is Rowan. I think those two are very good. They were good in the Wyatt family and I think that they can definitely be used for something bigger. I think personally Harper is would be a great Intercontinental Champion and I think Rowan would be a great Intercontinental Champion as well. I think both of them are really good material and they both can you know, provide great matches for us in the WWE universe. And I really think that they are one of the most underutilized people in the WWE right now, but they're apparently getting a push. I think they are going to win the titles at WrestleMania if they do get a match. And honestly, the Bludgeon Brothers will would be a great tag team to get a WrestleMania moment for. Harper and Rowan definitely do deserve a moment at WrestleMania. But anyway... The match ended with the Bludgeon Brothers winning via pinfall. And basically toward the end of the match, the Bludgeon Brothers smashed through the opposition once the bell began. And Us Jimmy Uso ended up taking the pin pig the pinfall and Big E took the post-match punishment and the Bludgeon Excuse me, I'm very sorry. The Bludgeon Brothers do win again. Honestly, guys, I don't watch SmackDown Live and I don't watch Monday Night Raw. I want to get these reviews out for you guys because I want to give my opinions on the shows. So, I did mention this a little bit in my Raw review. I do not watch the shows, but I want to give you guys my opinion on the matches and where where the booking is going. And I just think that it's a great way. And honestly, I love this new direction that my channel's going in where we're going to be doing all WWE. This is where I gain my popularity and this is where... Basically, this is what made my channel and gave me 
such great subscribers like you guys and I really appreciate every single one of you and I never thought in a million years I could get to a thousand subscribers on this YouTube channel so thank you so much again guys anyway let's move on to the next match the next match was actually no this was a promo Asuka ended up arriving on Smackdown live and Charlotte ended up coming out first and she told the crowd that she was excited about Asuka choosing the fight her when the Empress of Tomorrow stepped into the ring the champion the champion told Asuka she was hoping to fight her in order to cement her legacy as one of the best Smackdown superstars one of the best women's wrestlers of WWE and Asuka said that she sh she sought flair because she enjoys a challenge and then Randy Orton strolled to the ring seconds into Flair and Asuka's step stare down. And then that actually transitions into our next match. Now, honestly, before we go into our next match, I actually think that, you know, Charlotte and Asuka are two of the best women's wrestlers in the world today. They really are something special. WWE are really have something special with this women's division. They got Sasha Banks, who's a great wrestler. Bailey is an absolutely amazing wrestler. You know, we have Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch. You know, there's a lot of people. The four horsewomen could really be something in the WWE. You know, I would love to see a little faction with those four. And honestly, they do have some wrestlers that they're kind of underutilizing. For example, Carmella. She's been holding the Money in the Bank briefcase. But ever since that, she hasn't been doing anything. And I think that she really could put on some good matches also Natalia never count her out in my opinion I think that Natalia should have been contesting for the women's championship at Fastlane that would be a different mashup to see you know honestly Ruby Riot's a new opponent but I wouldn't have given her the title match so soon remember I think she debuted debuted on the main roster either December or January and she already is getting a title shot but to me that's just baffling I think that personally Ruby Riot should be definitely built up and I think that she could be a great superstar and I think the Riot Squad could be something to watch out for in the WWE come the next few months. So the matchup we had was United former US champion Bobby Roode taking on the modern day Maharaja Jinder Mahal. And the winner of this match was Jinder Mahal via pinfall towards the end of the match. A distraction from Sunil, Sunil Singh allowed Mahal to nail the co the his finisher basically and grabbed the win. Mahal had little chance to celebrate as Randy Orton came out of nowhere with the RKO to Jinder Mahal. And honestly, I don't think that they should have taken the title off Bobby Roode. I really don't think they should have. I think Randy Orton, I think he could have won it later in his career. And I know he's got numbered years, but you don't need to take the title off of Bobby Roode. Let's hope, though, after Randy Orton's second defense to Bobby Roode, which is going to happen at WrestleMania, we're going to get a triple threat. Hopefully, Bobby Roode can, I don't know, go into the world title picture. You know, face AJ Styles or Nakamura, whoever comes out of the WrestleMania match, the winner. And maybe we can get Bobby Roode as World Heavyweight Champion by the end of the year. I think that'd be really great. I think he's ready, personally. He has a great character. You know, he's one of the best wrestlers in the WWE. You know, he can really... You know, whether he's heel or face, personally, I love him as a heel because he's so great at gloating. He's one of the best, personally, and he really takes the glorious character. He takes it to another level. I think that Rude makes the glorious character. He makes it because he's just so good at what he does, and he can take on any role, and he can make the most of it. That's what a for uh that's what a future champion looks like and i think that bobby root is definitely a great star so the next match that we had was naomi taking on miss money bank carmella hey carmella's back so the winner on the mat of the match was carmella via pinfall and what happened was basically naomi slipped up on the ropes and carmella ended up getting the one two three and once again, I think that Carmella definitely could be a great star in the WWE. And I think when she cashes in that contract, she's going to win the title. And then Carmella could be a heel. You know, she could be a really a great heel. And, you know, that's just something to watch out for. When she cashes in that contract, she could 
become champion. She could be a great heel for the company. And honestly, I really love Naomi. Her wrestling is really good. And, you know, I just think that she's a really good wrestler. And she's one of the best women's wrestlers in the company. Now, moving on to the final thing in the main event of the show. Shane McMahon's WrestleMania announcement. So, basically, Shane McMahon came out and he said... That sadly, he is resigning as SmackDown Live Commissioner following the events at WWE Fastlane where Kevin Owens super kicked Shane McMahon. And then he ended up pulling Kevin and Sammy outside the ring. And Shane McMahon resigns as Commissioner. But not before he makes his last act a match at WrestleMania, Sami Zayn taking on Kevin Owens. And Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn ended up coming out. They said this was unfair and that Shane McMahon is so biased and that he created a grudge between Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. But then they finally teamed up together and Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn took out Shane McMahon. Shane McMahon basically was trying to fight back. He was throwing a couple punches after you know Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn attacked him from behind. But a haluva kick from Zayn quickly silenced Shane McMahon and then a pop-up powerbomb from Owens. And then Sami Zayn got a chair, wrapped it around Shane's neck, and then absolutely drove Shane headfirst into the pole. And they were not done yet. They dragged Shane into the locker room. And then Kevin Owens delivered a powerbomb on the steel equipment. And Shane McMahon is apparently injured. And honestly, I think this story is... honest. Honestly, for me, I think this story is... Just, it's getting annoying now, honestly, because Shane McMahon and Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, this three-way, I don't think that this is the best route for WWE right now. I think that these two could be doing some great storylines, and I think Shane McMahon should just stay corporate. I don't think he has to do anything for these guys, and honestly, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, two of the best wrestlers in the WWE, and honestly... I think that they're being wasted with this. I think they should be world champions right now. They should be world champions because Sami Zayn can wrestle like no other. His match with Nakamura at TakeOver Dallas was one of the best matches that NXT has ever seen. Maybe even WWE, you know, that was a great matchup. And also Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens at Battleground 2017, I believe, was another great match. And these two can really do a lot in the ring. And I think that Sami Zayn, honestly, he's a great heel. He's great when he's heel. However, I think as a babyface, WWE should have pushed him more. Gave him a world title. Gave him something to build off of. But sadly, they didn't do that. But now Sami Zayn is heel. You know, he's been heel for a couple months now. And WWE is not giving him a title. They need to give Sami Zayn, like, the U.S. Championship. Or maybe the Intercontinental Championship. Something like that. And then make Sami Zayn an anti-American guy. Make him like completely disgrace the title because he's Canadian. Have him and Kevin Owens disgrace the title. That would be so great for the US Championship. Because when Rusev did it, it was like the hottest thing on Raw. So I think that Rusev... You know, I think that Sami Zayn, if he could do what Rusev did, the United States Championship would be in a very good place right now. Anyway, boys, that's going to be it for my review. Hope you guys have enjoyed. If you did, smash the like on the video. Trash smash five likes. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see all you beautiful people later. Peace out.